Hello friends. Since we have touched the topic of wiring, then I think it's worth talking about the wires. What wires the guitar is soldered with. So let's go. So, let's figure out what kind of wires are used in the soldering of good guitars. The first type of wire that is used in modern guitars, in particular Gibson, is this kind of stranded wire. It has a foil shield, a foil shield. There is a core, ground, and four veins for contacts. This wire is commonly used in pickups, so that there's more possibility of combinations of pickup wiring, series, parallel, as ordinary pickups, humbucker, or separately, the coils of some kind are cut off or not cut off, all that. The wire used here is very thin, copper. I don't know, tint or not tint. Yes, there's a tint core, a very thin wire. I use the same wire to connect the winding wire to lead the tail from each coil. The beginning and end of it is exactly the same wire. It is thin, but tint. It is also used for soldering modern Les Pauls when you do not need to stretch as many as three wires inside the body. And they stretch one, one end to the switch, and the other end is attached to this kind of iron plate. You all probably saw it in Les Paul Gibson. Well, those who don't have Gibson are a little more fortunate. What is this plate for? It is needed for the speed of assembly of parts. That is, some worker at her workplace installs potentiometers into it, solders cheap ceramic capacitors, and sends it to the next workplace, where another worker quickly inserts it into the last pole. Speed is key. Henry Ford style assembly line. There is no more benefit from this plate. It's just an additional capacitance that takes our high frequencies from our sound path. If you have it in your guitar, then quickly get rid of it, as it spoils everything. Further, Les Paul, a shielded wire in a fabric braid is usually used. This has been the case since the days when there was no vinyl insulation or rubber insulation was used, but it was not very temperature resistant, because the wire can get hot and the insulation can melt. That's why we used fabric insulation, and it is very convenient. It is still used in expensive guitars. What is the special feature of this wire? This wire has a value of 22 AVG according to the American classification system, which corresponds to 0.75 millimeters. In this case, this wire has several cores inside. They are tinned and soldered together. Because of that, this wire bends well enough and keeps its shape. With such a wire, you can solder amplifier as well, making very neat and beautiful paths from part to part where you can line up the entire path with this wire and it will keep its shape. It is very nice and neat. But in a vintage Les Paul, a wire was used that was not soldered inside. Each core 
was stained in it, but they are individually rolled up. There is also double fabric insulation here. The first layer is white fabric, white thread, and the second is black. The fabric insulation is usually slightly waxed to keep it from unraveling. I had a Chinese-made wire, also quite good and sound. It has a stranded core, two layers of insulation. The cores are tinned, everything as it should be. Nice screen, but this fabric insulation is not waxed, so it unravels. It's not very good to work with. The wire is quite soft. In general, it is also well suited for soldering the last ball. I bought it on AliExpress, purely for trial. And I soldered several less balls, and actually it sounds very well. But it is inconvenient to use due to the fact that it unravels. My favorite wire for soldering the last ball and the pickup is the gavet wire. Good replicas are produced and sold by the Lux company. They are very worthy replicas of vintage wires. Basically, Gavit sells something of this sort. What is the distinguishing feature of this wire? In the vintage wire of the 50s, 60s, two strands were used in the screen. In viewing. Almost all modern braided wires use three standards, and they are a little thinner. It's not that important, it doesn't affect the sound, but it does affect the historical correspondence. Therefore, I try to use a historically more suitable cable. If there were two threads, then you need to use the suitable one. This is very important for collectors and freaks like me. This is what about last ball. If you cannot buy an American cable, then you can use a Soviet one. Here I have a coil of Soviet cable, MGTFLE, from 1977. In terms of its diameter, it is exactly the same as this one. But the cores in it are not tinned. But, as you can see, for so many years, since 77, they have not oxidized. Inside, the wire is also in fabric insulation. One layer of fabric insulation, and the insulation that goes to the cores is made of fluoroplastic, and it is slippery. The wire is quite temperature resistant. It's quite soft, and the only inconvenience with it is that it is uncomfortable to tin the tip of the fluoroplastic insulation. It has to be cut off with a knife, because the wire cutters, they just simply slip. Therefore, you have to use a scalpel. But I use its parts when my gavet wire runs out. I take this insulation here and put it on this wire, which is without a screen. I have it in stock, I rarely use it, but I have it. And sometimes I make a composite wire. But from this wire I notice that the fabric insulation is exactly the same as the tubing for insulating the legs of the capacitors, as they did in the 50s. I took this fabric insulation and dipped it in shellac. And I got a tubing that you can use to insulate capacitor legs in a more vintage way, as it was done before. Lux sells this tube in separately, but I found a way to make it myself. It happened just yesterday, and it worked. 
Once, several years ago, I tried to do the same trick from the inner insulation of this wire, from a fender. But since this is fabric insulation is in wax, the shellac simply did not dry out, it remained sticky. Dirt gathered on it, and it did not work the way I wanted. And here everything turned out fine. Okay. The Fender Stratocaster Telecaster is soldered with exactly the same wires, but without metal insulation, without a metal shield. There are two types of this wire, softer, where the cores are not soldered, and more rigid, where the cores are soldered. That is, they all sound very good. Just choose for yourself which one is more convenient for you to work with. I like soft wires, because, I don't know, it's convenient to work with them in the end. It is more convenient to solder amplifiers with this rigid wire, but guitars with this one. For the ground, this tinned copper wire is usually used. 0.19 AWG. This is one millimeter. But I like to use a slightly different wire, a little thicker. This is also tinned copper. One point one millimeter. What is remarkable about this wire? I found it in an old Swiss willow, in a wiring. Several years ago we made murals there, and electricians took out old wiring from the walls. I noticed that it was fabric insulated in rubber insulation, which has already rotted away, and inside there was a copper core. And all copper is cleaner, it is free of impurities, because now all copper is with admixtures. Your copper is almost impossible to find, so I saved a few skeins of this wire for myself. It took a very long time to clean it, from rubber insulation. I cleaned it up, saved it, and it sounds very good. I like it, I use it to wire the ground on the potentiometers. Well, of course, you can find some other analogs of such wires, but rather than look for them, you can just buy them on some American website, on Mojotone, on Philadelphia Luthiers, or on stumac.com. You can buy a good American wire and solder your guitar well. As for the solder, I can say that this Kimco solder is the best solder I've tried. One millimeter plus flux is very pure, it's rosin, just gorgeous, very smooth surface, shiny, it works well with temperature. That's why I highly recommend this kind of Kimco solder. Well, that's all for now. The next videos will probably be about capacitors, because I see that there is a lot of things to uncover there and to provide answers to your questions. Well, friends, I think the video was useful. Please write in the comments what alternative wire options have you ever used in your guitars? or what wires are installed in your guitar right now. And if you have ever changed the wiring in your guitar, please tell us about your experience and your feelings, what has changed. And I say goodbye to you now, but not for long.